Starting off our list for the most important Cardinals for the 2024 season are the honorable mentions. Mason Wynn is a top prospect in all of baseball who broke out in AAA last year, resulting in a cup of coffee in St. Louis at the very end of the season. Wynn boasts an 80-grade arm that will help him develop into one of the best defensive shortstops in baseball and pairs that with elite speed that makes him a legit threat on the base pass. Wynn has gone from just an exciting defensive prospect to someone who the industry thinks could be a very valuable shortstop for years to come due to the development of his bat. With plus contact and a good approach at the plate, Wynn should be able to hold his own against big league pitching and possibly develop into an above league average hitter due to his sneaky power as well. The Cardinals have not had a true long-term answer at shortstop since Ozzie Smith, and Wynn is looking more and more like the guy who will answer that decades-long question for St. Louis. And just missing out on our top 10 list is Cardinals first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt. It feels odd to have Goldie on the outside looking in on this list, but after a down year in 2023, one has to wonder whether or not other players on the Cardinals roster will surpass Goldschmidt as middle-of-the-order bats. After posting a 7-F4 season 176 WRC Plus on his way toward winning National League Most Valuable Player in 2022, Goldie posted his lowest OPS since his rookie year in large part due to major regression in his ISO and slugging percentage. Goldie was still a 122 WRC Plus hitter in 2023 and posted a 3.7 F4, so it's clear that he's still a very valuable player. While fans should expect Goldie to post an OPS north of 800 and over 120 WRC plus in 2024, the reason he missed the cut is that it's not obvious he'll reach the heights as a hitter that he has most of his career. If Goldie is entering a different stage in his career where he boasts less power, he's still a very valuable member of the Cardinals lineup, but he lacks the upside of other bats in St. Louis. Coming in at number 10 on our list is Cardinals left-handed starter Steven Matz. While no one will argue that Matz is a top 10 player on the Cardinals roster, it's hard to argue against the potential impact Matz can have on this rotation if he remains healthy and pitches to his full potential. It's been a rough first two years in St. Louis for Matz, posting a 4.29 ERA in just 153 innings. Matz has dealt with a variety of injuries that have kept him off the mound far too often, and when he has been pitching, it's not been to the level the Cardinals were expecting when they signed him. In 2023, Matz really struggled out of the gate posting a 5.72 ERA in his first 10 starts of the season, forcing the Cardinals to remove him from the starting rotation. During his month-long stint in the bullpen, Matt's got more comfortable with his curveball, refined his changeup, and started pitching with more of an edge, leading to a 2.81 ERA as a reliever. In his return to the rotation in July, Matt's was a completely different pitcher, utilizing his sneaky strikeout stuff to keep hitters off balance and provide the Cardinals with quality outings. In the seven starts he made before hitting the injured list, the Cardinals went 6-1 in his starts as Matt's posted 1.86 ERA in 38.2 innings. What Landon Matz on our top 10 is the potential he has to give the Cardinals a true middle of the rotation starter. While they lack a second frontline starter to pair with Sonny Gray, Matz has the stuff to separate himself from the group of Kyle Gibson, Lance Lynn, and Miles Michaelis as someone the Cardinals can trust to shut down lineups and maybe even pitch in a playoff series. A lot of that will be determined by Matz's ability to stay healthy in 2024. At number nine, we have Cardinal Swiss Army Knife Tommy Edmond. Ever since debuting during the 2019 season, Edmund has been the glue that helps the Cardinals position player group stay together. Last year, Edmund filled in as the Cardinals shortstop as they waited for Mason Wynn to be ready, but as usual, the club had Edmund bouncing around quite a bit. Edmund appeared at shortstop in just 48 games while slotting in at second base for an additional 51 games before the Cardinals found lightning in a bottle with Edmund in center field during the second half. Edmund was excellent defensively in center field, posting five outs above league average in 42 games, and if you stretch that out across an entire season, he would have been a top five defensive center fielder in the game. Edmund's arm leaves a lot to be desired in center, but his speed, range, and feel for the position already make up for that. After what was a career year in 2022 where Edmund was 6% above league average at the plate while providing defensive value all over the place, he had a lot of trouble producing offensively in 2023 with just a 92 WRC plus in 137 games played. The Cardinals don't need Edmund to be more than a league average hitter with the defense he provides them, but bouncing back at the plate in 2024 would be ideal. The major reason that Edmund is so valuable in 2024 for the Cardinals is the glue he provides them. He is set to be their opening day center fielder at the moment, but he's also their insurance at shortstop should Mason win struggle or get hurt. Even with Victor Scott II coming soon, it's risky for the Cardinals to put all their eggs in the win or Scott basket so soon. So having Edmund as a stable veteran who could fill in at both positions will be critical for them in 2024. Coming in at number 8 on our list is flamethrowing closer Ryan Helsley. Helsley was a first-time 
all-star for the Cardinals in 2022, posting a 1.25 ERA of 94 strikeouts in just 64 and two-thirds innings of work, emerging as one of the top closers in the game. Like most of the Cardinals roster in 2023, Helsley was in a funk to begin the season, blowing three leads in the month of April alone and posting a 3.52 ERA through the first two months of the season. Helsley missed about three months of the season with a forearm strain as the Cardinals bullpen imploded, and it really showed fans why Helsley is so important to the Cardinals' success. Helsley returned from injury on September 1st and was lights out during the final 11 games of the season, posting a 0.77 ERA, 1.54 fifth, showing that he was back to his 2022 form and was someone the Cardinals can rely on entering the 2024 season. The Cardinals have made a variety of bullpen additions this offseason to strengthen their high leverage mix, adding Andrew Kittredge, Keenan Middleton, and other swing and miss arms to their mix of Helsley, Giovanni Gallegos, and Jojo Romero. While the Cardinals' bullpen should be a lot stronger than it was in 2023, the health and performance of Ryan Helsley will dictate whether or not their bullpen could be a true strength of the team. Helsley, when at his best, provides the Cardinals with a shutdown option at the back end of games, and with the way the Cardinals have built the rotation in 2024, they need a guy who they know will shut the door when called upon, helping them to shorten games and compete at a high level once again in 2024. The next three players on this list were all tied between the three of us in our rankings, but based on tiebreakers, Lars Newbar comes in at number seven on our list. Newbar became an international sensation heading into the 2023 season, winning the gold medal on Team Japan alongside superstars Shohei Otani, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and Roki Sasaki. And the hope was that Newbar would carry that momentum into the regular season as a trendy breakout star amongst experts around the industry. Newbar immediately hit the injured list after jamming his thumb on a headfirst slide into third base on opening day and would end up hitting the injured list two more times in the season. While Newbar was on the field, though, he was extremely productive, posting a 784 OPS and a 118 WRC Plus with a 3.2 F4 in just 117 games played. The key for Newbar in 2024 is remaining on the field, as when he's been able to play consistently, Newbar really begins to shine as both the hitter and a defender. After returning from his back injury on June 19th, Newbar put up a 204 plate appearance stretch where he posted an 893 OPS and 144 WRC plus, combining his elite on-base skills with the power he was finally beginning to tap into. Newbar looked like a true force at the plate, the player the analytics gurus were waiting for to break out but lost that momentum after an abdomen injury. When healthy, Newbar is a player who hits the ball extremely hard while having elite chase and whiff percentages, a recipe for excellent production moving forward. Newbar is not just an advanced analytics darling. He's used those underlying metrics to find success on the field when given opportunities, and he now enters 2024 as the Cardinals' everyday left fielder. St. Louis has lacked consistency from their outfield group for years now. If Newbar is able to put the freak injuries behind him in 2024, he will provide the Cardinals with an extremely productive left-handed bat in left field every day who has the potential to be their best player in 2024. Landing at number six on our list is catcher Wilson Contreras. After coming over from the Chicago Cubs in 2023, the heir to Yadier Molina's throne in St. Louis experienced a less-than-storybook beginning to his Cardinals tenure. A little over a month into the season, Wilson Contreras was removed from his catching duties, acting as the scapegoat for the Cardinals' early season struggles and blamed for many of their pitching issues. That plan lasted only a few weeks, but the damage had already been done and the Cardinals created a massive controversy that Contreras found himself at the center of. Contreras handled the whole situation with his head held high, but to no one's surprise, it had an impact on his performance in all facets of the game. Contreras was never known for being a defensive catcher, so it was to be expected that there would be some growing pains there. But the real issue was his lack of productivity at the plate. Through the month of June, Contreras slashed just 215, 303, 369, good for a 672 OPS with just 8 home runs and 73 games played. And there is beginning to be serious conversations about the Cardinals had made a massive mistake with this contract. From July 1st until the end of the season, though, Contreras bounced back in a major way, producing like a top 5 hitter in all of baseball. During the final 3 months of the season, Contreras ranked 5th in average, 2nd on base percentage, 3rd in slugging percentage, and 2nd in OPS among all hitters in baseball. Contreras was a mind-boggling 88% above league average as a hitter during that stretch. Contreras ended the season with a 127 WRC+, 19th best among all qualified hitters in baseball, and is coming into 2024 looking to produce at a high level consistently. While no one expects Contreras to be a top 5 hitter for the entire 2024 season, expectations 
projections should be that Contreras is a top 20 or 30 hitter in the game once again, which is incredible value from a primary catcher. With the addition of Yadier Molina as an advisor in 2024, the Cardinals are hoping that Contreras can take steps forward behind the plate as well. If Contreras is able to make some improvements defensively in 2024, he's not only one of the most valuable players on the Cardinals roster, but perhaps one of the most valuable players in all of baseball. Slotting in at number five on our list is utility star Brendan Donovan. This may seem like a high ranking to the casual fan, but Brendan Donovan has quietly emerged as one of the most important players on the Cardinals roster. At Cardinals winter warmup, players and coaches alike spoke highly of Donovan's leadership, identifying him as a guy who the clubhouse respects and is someone who is pushing this team to get back into contention in 2024. After finishing top three in rookie of the year voting with a stellar 128 WRC plus in 2022, Donovan began the 2023 season slow out of the gate, but made an adjustment during the month of May to be more aggressive early in counts. Donovan increased his first pitch swing percentage from 17 to 27 percent and saw incredible results while taking advantage of good pitches early in counts. Over the next 10 weeks, Donovan saw massive jumps in his on-base and slugging percentage, slashing 314, 398, 485 with eight home runs and a 144 WRC plus over that stretch of baseball. Donovan's WRC plus was 17th in all of baseball during those 54 games and his on-base percentage and batting average both ranked within the top 12. We talk a lot about the need for a strong leadoff man in today's game and Donovan has proven he's one of the very best in all of baseball. The ability he showed in his sophomore season to adjust to how teams are pitching to him and find elite production by making adjustments of his own is key for him to be a productive player in this league. And going into year three, I expect more of the same from the Cardinals utility man. Donovan also provides the Cardinals immense value with his ability to play all over the field. Not only is he a top bat on the Cardinals roster, but he's able to slot in at second base, first base, third base, left field, right field, and even shortstop when needed. Expect Donovan to be an everyday player for the Cardinals in 2024 while filling in at different positions every day, truly establishing himself nationally as one of the best leadoff men in all of baseball. Finding himself at number four on our list, Nolan Gorman boasts a tool that no one else on the Cardinals roster has. Elite power from the left side of the plate. If you look around the game of baseball on the teams that have success in October, their lineups have one or two guys who can mash the ball from the left side. Gorman has already shown he can be that guy for the Cardinals for sustained stretches, and the key for him in 2024 is doing that for an entire season. Gorman is a streaky hitter by nature, so the Cardinals have to live with the low moments at the plate if they want to benefit from the elite production when he's on. But even with that streakiness, Gorman was one of the best young hitters in baseball for the entire year, outside of a horrible stretch during the month of June. Gorman had 76 plate appearances that month, posting a dreadful 22 WRC plus with just 439 OPS during that stretch. In all other months of the season, Gorman posted a 137 WRC plus and an 880 OPS, both of which would have been top 12 in all of baseball stretched out over an entire season. That historically bad June tanked a lot of Gorman's numbers for 2023 as did missing sustained stretches with back injuries. If Gorman is able to play more than just 119 games he registered in 2023, he'll easily be a 30-plus home run guy and could even jump into a historic group of second basemen who've hit 40 or more home runs in a season. Gorman made the top four of our list because of the way he's able to take the Cardinals lineup to the next level if he's healthy and producing like we've already seen him able to do. Gorman's power is special, and putting that in the heart of the Cardinals lineup on a consistent basis takes the Cardinals lineup from a potentially great unit to one that could be truly elite in 2024. Speaking of taking the Cardinals lineup to the next level in 2024, former top prospect in all of baseball, Jordan Walker, comes in at number three on our list. The best young player the Cardinals have had since Oscar Taveras and Albert Pujols, Walker earned his way into the Cardinals opening day roster in 2023, and after a historic 12-game hitting streak to begin his career, struggled with a league-high ground ball rate and was sent down to Memphis to work on lifting the ball more. While it created controversy at the time, Walker's time in Memphis paid off in a big way as Walker returned to St. Louis in June as a different hitter, slashing 277, 346, 455 with an 802 OPS and 120 WRC+. He continued to get better and better at the plate as the year went on, posting a 126 WRC+, over his final 56 games and lowering his ground ball percentage by over 20%. Walker won't turn 22 until May 22nd and is already figuring out how to use his huge frame to unlock elite power while being an on-base machine. Many projection systems are already predicting Walker to to be the Cardinals best hitter in 2024. Walker looks primed to break out as a young superstar in today's game, with Fangrass Zips seeing Walker being a top 15 hitter in baseball if he taps into even more of his potential this season. The elephant in the room with Walker last year was his defense. After beginning to transition to the outfield late in 2022, Walker was 
made an everyday outfielder at the major league level in 2023 and was one of the worst defensive outfielders in baseball for much of the year. He did begin to make strides in that area as the season went on, looking more like an average defender toward the end of the year, but is still in need of some major work this offseason. Walker has been working with Jose Okendo this offseason on his defense, and if he's even just league average out there in 2024, that is a massive improvement for the club. Walker, like Nolan Gorman, has the talent to force his way into the middle of the Cardinals lineup in the immediate future, and if he's able to do that, he will make the St. Louis offense a scary unit for the rest of the league to deal with. Walker should be a borderline all-star bat in 2024, but don't be surprised if he truly breaks out as one of the best hitters in today's game. Coming in at number two on our list, Cardinals superstar third baseman Nolan Arenado is looking to rebound from a frustrating 2023 season, both individually and collectively as a team. Arenado is all about winning, so the combination of his struggles offensively and in the field, his nagging back injury, and the club's overall performance was a tough pill for the 10-time Gold Glover to swallow. After finishing top three in the National League MVP voting in 2022, Arenado was an all-star in the first half of the season, but fell off significantly at the plate in the second half, hitting well below league average and seeing his power evaporate from his game. His back issues clearly played a role in his struggles in the second half, and it eventually landed Arenado in the injured list to end his season. Arenado was not himself defensively either, especially in the first half of the season, where his normally elite defensive runs saved and outs above average were replaced with below league average defense at times. While he mostly figured things out defensively in the second half, 2023 was the first year of Arenado's career where he did not win the gold glove at third base, ending a 10-year run of dominance. The Cardinals' defense took a major step back in 2023 and their offense was inconsistent for most of the season, so getting Arenado back to his usual self in both facets will help the club get back to being a playoff team in 2024. Arenado will be 33 years old in April, so the Cardinals are still hoping that he has one to two elite seasons left before age really begins the show. While some may argue that the regression in 2023 was the first sign of that, it seems more likely that his injury and the disastrous season that the Cardinals had played a much bigger role in that. Arenado finished barely above league average offensively in 2023 after an all-star worthy performance in the first half, so 2024 will be Arenado's opportunity to prove whether or not the end of the year was just a fluke or a sign of things to come. Getting Arenado Arenado closer to his old self in 2024 is one of the biggest keys to success for St. Louis this coming season. The most important player on the St. Louis Cardinals in 2024 has to be their biggest acquisition of the offseason, starting pitcher Sonny Gray. Gray has been one of the most underrated pitchers in all of baseball over the course of his 11-year career thus far, finishing top three in Cy Young voting twice, including 2023 where he finished runner-up to Garrett Cole in American League Cy Young voting. Gray began his career as an up-and-coming ace in Oakland, but after being traded to New York in 2017, he struggled to find himself as a starter for that two-year stretch. Since that frustrating stint in New York, Gray has posted a 3-2-2 ERA over the last five seasons and was named to the All-Star team twice in those five years. Gray has continued to evolve as a pitcher and offers six different pitches to keep hitters off balance throughout an entire game, including one of the best sweepers in all of baseball that had a 41.3% whiff rate in 2023 and ranked first in run value among all sweepers in baseball. Gray is a bulldog on the mound, someone who pitches with a fiery competitive spirit every time he takes the mound, and he's going to push teammates to approach every at-bat every defensive opportunity, and every pitch with the same mentality. Gray may be the most talented starter the Cardinals have had since Jack Flaherty went on his insane run in 2019, and it'll be a breath of fresh air in St. Louis to be able to rely upon an arm like Gray every fifth day. Having an elite starter like Gray takes the pressure off the rotation, the bullpen, and even the offense, allowing them to go out and play looser, knowing that they have a stud at the top of the rotation. Since the Cardinals failed to pair Gray with another top-end starter this offseason, the Cardinals are really relying on Gray to carry the load for them at the top of their rotation. If Gray were to struggle or get injured, it would put the Cardinals in a really tough spot, which is why Gray is the most important Cardinals player on their roster in 2024. So that's our list of the 10 most important Cardinals going into the 2024 season. Let us know what you think of our list below, and make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons on your way out, as it helps the channel out a ton and allows us to keep creating fun episodes like this and our regular podcast episodes. We'll see you next time.